What's up, Samurai? We are back in Small Troll. Do -do 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 -do. And today we're going to be talking about your boy, the Solarian, because a lot of things have been brought up to me more recently. Uh, frankly speaking, I never ended up maining the class like hardcore for fighting Leviathans and so on and so forth. But today's video is most of all going to end up focusing on not only how you're going to end up building the class, but also just how powerful it can end up being, because this is currently without a doubt, the strongest class in the entire game. Now, just before we get started with today's video, I gotta let you guys know that I'm testing out some new mic settings. So in short, I'm in a very echoey room. I use NVIDIA Broadcast, which has kind of an AI aspect of it that tries to get rid of the echo cancellation, right? And it does that fairly well. But one of the problems with this program is because it's AI driven, it means that whenever I would yell or something like that, the, the robot would just like freak out and not know what to do. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually using noise removal on top of the echo cancellation. So I won't know until editing if I sound really, really weird. Okay, so I, I'm just letting you guys know that ahead of time. And then also I would appreciate if you would smack like, you know how it goes. So Solarian is currently the strongest class in the game. There is no question about that. Nobody is going to ever say otherwise. Uh, and it kind of makes sense because frankly speaking, the class is just so ridiculously difficult to end up farming if you don't end up just spending money. And obviously if you're buying credit pouches, well, good luck with that. But the thing is with this class, the way that it works, let me make sure that the biome, nope. Zone restrict nobody. We also got double XP uh, boost this week. So hopefully this will work. But the way that the class works essentially is when we end up tagging enemies, if it would ever actually function, you see all these weird little icons going on top of the training dummy. That's going to be a dot or damage over time. And that's kind of the whole crux of the character is all of that just stacks and stacks and stacks more and more damage. And then we end up using our ultimate ability, which has even more damage. Now, the hidden ring effect is going to end up making a huge, huge difference on this class. Uh, I don't really use the hidden ring effects too much, but prismatic chain is the one that you're going to want to go for because it will allow you to... Uh, basically, when you use your ult, all of the enemies in the vicinity are going to end up triggering your ult again. So it just goes and everything just explodes, right? Now, the thing is, as far as speed farming, I can't recommend this character. That's kind of its weak link right now, is that you're not going to end up having much movement speed on it. So obviously, I still have movement speed and attack speed on all my gear because this is my Shadowhunter gear. But ideally, you would be building this character towards crit damage and attack speed. And I mean, even with all of this movement speed, I can still solo Leviathans in U10 and even U11. U11 is a bit slower and it's a bit more tedious, but frankly speaking, ladies and gentlemen, there is no reason that you would ever want to fight a Leviathan in U11. And for those of you wondering what is a Leviathan in U11, it's just going to randomly choose a Leviathan from the previous tiered Uber worlds. And it just has a higher light resistance. That's basically it. You don't get better items and there's absolutely no incentive to end up actually fighting them. So anyways, let's move on and talk about the stats themselves. So for the subclass ability, I mean, I always just use Knight subclass just because it's kind of a standard given for the extra movement speed with mount movement speed, which we don't really need anymore because the skill tree will actually give us a lot of passive movement speed buff. But if you don't have movement speed on any of your gear maybe you would want that otherwise lunar lancer is going to end up being a good substitute uh candy barb can be okay not great and fate trickster is secretly kind of a good one as well same with the bard just because of the extra crit damage that you end up getting out of it and then as mentioned with the gear you're ideally going to end up having attack speed and then crit damage just because of the character being so focused on damage itself uh, the ring, I mean, good luck getting the stats that you want on this. Beggars can't be choosers. You're just trying to get the highest crystal ring possible. For the banner, you probably want to end up using the torches that you get from Leviathans, which, incidentally, because you're so powerful in this character, you'll be able to kill Leviathans no problem. You know, even, even mid to, like, end game tier, you should be able to handle Leviathans just because the damage output is just so insane. And there's a trick to doing the most optimal output of damage, and I'll tell you guys that in a sec. Now, we've actually got quite a few option ally options. Bleh. Yeah, words. 
Um, Ernie's kind of been the standard one that we always talk about, but you guys have been letting me know that there is the, is it crab or lobster? There, it's in the star chart. Okay, it's a scorpion. So this is going to end up being the best physical ally in the game right now, and I think this is the best magic ally, if I'm not mistaken. I mean, the star chart basically just has all of the best allies in the game currently, but the scorpion one, which I don't have currently, uh, is the same as Ernie, so it gives us the most light value and a good chunk of physical damage, but it also gives us life leech when an enemy dies, but more importantly, gives us that precious movement speed, whereas Ernie just gives us a shield, which doesn't really doesn't really serve much of a purpose. Food items, not too important, just use whatever you can. Uh, and then for the emblems, this is where things get a little bit tricky because you've got a couple different options. So if you are dying a lot, I would actually recommend swapping Marshall off for Unyielding. Obviously, if you're at the early game, you would be using uh, Sure Strike, uh, Unyielding, and possibly Zealous uh, as the main combination. And if you absolutely only have the Solarian for your main character, you would obviously have to use a lot of Trailblazing to try and compensate for that lack of movement speed. But the trick is that when you end up using your ultimate ability with the Solarian, what happens is it's going to start draining your energy. And fun fact, if you actually are in the middle of your energy being drained, you can pop a flask with the Zealous Emblem to restore all of your energy, and then your ult will just continue. So the most optimal amount of damage you could do is using Zealous and Martial Emblem. And then you just tag like a Leviathan or whatever your opponent is with all of your dots. And then you use your ult and then you just sit there attacking and spamming your, you know, spamming your flash because it's going to end up giving you that sweet buff from Martial and also just keeps giving you more and more energy. I found that it's a little bit finicky just because Trove always is. So a lot of times, like, my ult would just stop working it, just because the servers didn't recognize that I was using it. I don't know, whatever. Um, but as I was saying, if you are not suffering from damage, but you're suffering from dying, like let's say you're fighting a U10 Leviathan and you're getting too frustrated at the fact that it keeps one-shotting you, or more specifically, you're trying to solo it and it keeps pulling you in and one-shotting you, you could sacrifice the Martial Emblem or the Zealous, it's up to you, for unyielding just because it will end up making you invulnerable to that final attack that just one shots you through death defying now speaking of death defying death defying is still the standard flask if you're not like at the late tier of the game if you don't have the life leech out of the skill tree and then just in general if you are particularly weak death defying is going to be your best friend however for somebody like me who is at the end game I keep using Death Defying just out of habit, but frankly speaking, we should be swapping to Conjurer's Crucible just because it has a chance to recover a flash charge when Magic Find triggers. There are a couple other options, like if we want to just use Elysian because of the sheer fact that we get so much more flash capacity, that will end up being very helpful in terms of just bursting through bosses and stuff, right? And yeah, I mean, anyways, essentially that's going to end up being your best options for this guy. Now let's move on to the gems themselves. So, you know, gems are kind of always just the standard, like you want these on basically every character. Uh, for your cosmic gems, you're going to want to go for Berserk Battler because that's going to give you the most light. If you're suffering from dying a lot, you would use Vampirium, but generally speaking, you're going to use Berserk Battler. Um, when you are leveling up your cosmic gems, a good rule of thumb is that your lesser gems in particular, as you level them up to level 15, all of the pearls will de be distributed. So because you're going to be getting so many cosmic gems, there is the chance that you could just keep on leveling cosmic gems over and over again in the hopes that you get three pearls into light unless you're at the end game and you're farming for crystal gems and then beggars can't be choosers because unfortunately the light value cannot be randomized with a chaos spark so you have to use a chaos flare which will purposefully move the slot of these pearls and you gotta just keep doing it over and over until they randomly all go towards light and then obviously physical damage and crit damage is all of your extra stats but the cosmic gems are kind of the main brunt of it and then for your other uh, Empower Gems, don't bother with Volatile Velocity. I have this because, again, this is from my Shadow Hunter. Pyro Disc is going to be a must just because of the movement speed lacking on this class. And then, of course, you need to have the class gem ability. All of these are going to end up having the same stats, which is going to be two pearls, physical, one pearl, crit damage. And then no pearls, crit hit, 
until you can sacrifice it. Because obviously, as of right now, we only need to have 100% crit hit. There are hints that we're going to need over 100% crit hit in the next big update, which fingers crossed we hear about that soon, but we don't know. Uh, for the lesser gems, it's going to end up being mostly the same thing, but you can always kind of do a mix and match of all of them. Um, good rule of thumb is you'll have three of these gems be two pearls physical, one pearl crit damage, no pearls crit hit, and then the other three will end up being two pearls crit damage, one pearl physical, and no pearls crit hit. If you have variation, like three pearls physical damage, three pearls crit damage, it doesn't really matter. And again, your crit hit, you will sacrifice as soon as you get over 100% until whatever big update they've got planned comes. But that's going to end up doing it for me. Thanks for watching, gamers. I wanted to have this as a sort of condensed video because I realized that we never ended up talking about the Solarians builds other than like stuff from the test server. And generally speaking, you might see more build videos coming out again, just because I stopped making them because we kind of already covered most of the classes last year, as far as I recall. And there hasn't really been, uh, well, over the years of me playing Trove, there hasn't been much reason to constantly update those videos, but now there is the skill tree. So that is probably something that is worth mentioning with the skill tree and paragon levels and so on uh, to actually talk about in the well in the build so uh, i'll end up having another video that's going to highlight uh the best stats that you're going to end up getting out of the skill tree but essentially it's going to be this with me still missing a few stats right here just because it's very time gated uh but we would end up getting light out of this skill tree there's light here light here all these other ones you see me going for is because of this movement speed and then otherwise we would end up going down into this chain eventually but uh, again we'll have another video that'll highlight the uh skill tree itself specifically but anyways Thanks for watching. Smash like stuff for more. Buy the merch you want to support the channel and have a wonderful day, everybody.